This is mile high. We have to do it better in order to move people along. Up, down, inside out. If you get your mind right, it is not. It is a receiver of thought. Because love is my first technique. It's now time for the show. Welcome to the Mile High Podcast. This is your host, Dr. Daniel Knowles, coming to you from an altitude of 5,280 feet in beautiful Colorado. And this is a global edition of the Mile High Podcast. And first and foremost, one, if you're a listener, first time, hey, make sure you hit that subscribe button, whether you're listening to this on iTunes or YouTube or Stitcher or wherever you're listening to this is downloaded worldwide. Number two, make sure, or if you have not already, you've absolutely cleared your calendar to rise up to Mile High, August 16th to 19th. Get registered, www.milehighchiro.org. The longer you wait, the more the rates rise up for registration. So the sooner you commit, the sooner your team and you will rise up to increasing your skills, your philosophy, your vision, your strategies and practice. Today, as I said, we have a global episode. I am very excited to have this guest who um, I absolutely love all the work he does in chiropractic. This is going to be a very great information episode for you, an inspiring episode. Um, Dr. David Russell has had a big history of service in chiropractic. He has served the New Zealand Chiropractic College. He has served the Australian Spinal Research Foundation on its board, its clinical advisory panel, and its research committee, and I'm sure he served other organizations too. He's all in on chiropractic and helping us impact chiropractic globally. Welcome to the podcast, Dr. David Russell. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here, an honor. And I'm glad that you stayed up late. It's a different time zone there while I'm here on the two it, ends it. of the globe. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is the future right here. <laughs> we're, we're in tomorrow. <laughs> yes, yes. We're, we're going across uh, time zones. Um, hey, so first of all, what I'd like to do is is get 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 people to know you a little bit because after all you're you're an Australian in New Zealand if I got that right yep. so this could cause some right. confusion we don't have international I incidents so first of all how did you find your way into <laughs> chiropractic um how did I find my way actually actually my uh, my grandfather was always under chiropractic care with um, what he referred to as the jinker man and he used to go and see the jinker man every about every two weeks or something like that and then my um, my mother started under chiropractic care took me along to a health talk it just made sense brain body communication if there's interference doesn't help the way your body works just made sense so I started under chiropractic care and about how old were you then? I was. I started late. I was about. I was about thirteen. Oh, okay. And same, uh, same as me. Yeah, but I. It, it had such a dramatic. You know, the change with me was. I was horrifically shy, and all of a sudden that changed. Academically, I was. You know, there were some things I'd do all right in, and there's some things that I was real, really not doing that well in, and. My concentration must have improved because academically that just went up across the board. Um, athletic wise, I went from being above average in a regional, uh, I was a distance runner and I was above average regionally too. I think I was, I was 14th in Queensland after about 15 months in chiropractic care. So I knew how to run a race. I was just I was more efficient, I'd recover from injury faster, and it just, all of a sudden, it dawned on me, but it dawned on me too late. It dawned on me uh, when I was in my high, final year of high school, I want to be a chiropractor, and I'd, do, I'd done sort of artsy subjects and not sciencey subjects, so I had to go and redo all the sciencey subjects at university and go to chiropractic college, oh. and um, it was, it was, you know, it was sort of a baptism of fire science-wise, but I, um, I made my way to New, New Zealand, actually. Actually, to uh, to study, and that was back in that was back in the real early raw days of. Um, I'm a very proud graduate of the NZCA School of Chiropractic, and <laughs> we we literally had three. Well, we had we had a professional practice course, but for the first few years, we had three three subjects: philosophy, science, and art. And that's what you had every semester: <laughs> philosophy, science, and art. And it was just brilliant. I loved it. 
That's awesome. <laughs> well, you know, so that's how that's how that's funny. We have a very right similar background. My my mom just you know went to chiropractic school when I was a teen, and I started getting adjusted around thirteen. And, turn my athletic ability around and my health around. And then yeah. like I did, don't, I, you were a little faster than me. I was until the end of college. I said, Oh, I want to be a chiropractor. So I had to go back and do all my sciences so, yeah. <laughs> and, and catch up. So that's interesting oh, because yeah. then you end up in a world where you do a lot with the science of chiropractic. Um, not that you're not, yeah. you know, do a lot in other areas, but you're, you're, you're well known for uh, contrib contributions to research, um, especially the Australian Spinal Research Foundation. And we are very thrilled this year to be highlighting the ASRF. Um, every year, Mile High, we, we highlight a different nonprofit organization that's doing something to help chiropractic. Because we want people to be aware rather than just in the trenches in their office and they don't realize what's going on out, out, outside the profession that they can contribute and need to be a part of. Um, so for what's your tell me a little bit about how you or got involved with the ASRF and what you do with it well first of all um, I actually think it's fabulous that you guys are, are supporting the ASRF last year the foundation for vertebral subluxation both organizations are uh, you know we're, we're steadfast in researching vertebral subluxation the effects of the adjustment and why, why I think it's so brilliant that you that you guys are supporting it this year it's like an American event or organization supporting an, an organization on the other side of the planet it's the it's the chiropractic world coming together and working together towards a common goal which so I thank you so much for the support um, how did I get involved well it was I'd been on the faculty at the New Zealand College of Chiropractic and I was running the clinical program there and um, I, was, I was just, uh, I guess I'd, I'd always been along to, to events like the, the ASRF used to have um, DG which is right. kind of like the Mike Pie or a DE and I'd been along to that and I knew a lot of the people and they, they invite, because I'd been involved in writing some research they invited me onto the um, clinical advisory panel so I started reviewing research submissions for them and um, from there uh, I was invited onto the board and spent um, uh, several years on, on the board uh, f finishing up after we'd gone through the um, uh, the development of the subluxation definition and the new research agenda and I've stepped I've, I've kind of retired into just doing research reviews for them so um, uh, but yeah it's that that's how I got into it and it, they play a really, really important role in in um, the growth of research and, chiro and chiropractic or subluxation-centered research for the profession. Yeah, so let's help people know the a the Australian Spinal Research Foundation. Like, as you said, global. Uh, there are people in the U.S. that don't even know this organization exists or what they do. So, um, l what what is the SRF all about? Well. <laughs> First and foremost, it is about supporting or funding research that is that's chirocentric. Funding research that investigates the subluxation and the effects of the adjustment. Okay, and and, and those effects on human function and, and quality of life. Um, we it, it's been going for about forty years now, but the the. That over time, there's been little changes in 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 the in the sort of research that was funded. When I first came onto this onto the board, um, they were it was it was basically was it ba basic science and clinical had to be subluxation focused, but basic science or clinical. Then we sat down and we took we took 12 months off funding research actually, and said, right, what we're going to do in this time is assess where is the work at chiropractic research world out. What do we need? What do we need that's clinically relevant? And um, um, mirroring somewhat the, the Foundation for Vertebral Subluxation um, research agenda, we we went around the world and we, uh, we interviewed about 80 odd people to help develop a definition, a conceptual definition of subluxation and develop the research agenda. So essentially the research agenda is to first and foremost look at the reliability and validity of vertebral subluxation, then the effects of the adjustment and ongoing and ongoing into quality of life. Okay, but we, we, rec we recognised, as I think a few organisations around the world have recognised, there, there is a gap in the research and that comes, that's back to in, you know, we've, we've looked at a lot of outcomes of chiropractic care, but we really need to spend a lot more time looking at the reliability and validity 
of assessment of, of subluxation. Um, yeah. And, and what I refer to as the direct indicators of subluxation. There's lots of other things, EMG and HRV, that's some excellent stuff. We need to be doing more research into that. But, you know, like the things that we do every day in practice, leg length checks, motion palpation, things like that, uh, are, can we reliably assess the subluxation and what does it mean? Yeah, absolutely. And, 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 and yeah. I, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, what you're referring to is the new subluxation definition paradigm that you put out. Is that what correct? You're, okay. Yeah, yeah, and absolutely. I will have to say, I was very honored to have been invited and been part of one of those discussions in California. It was very yeah, yeah. enlightening. Yeah. It, it was just yeah. an honor to be in the room with everybody um, discussing that. And so let's break that down a little bit. Looking at this uh, subluxation paradigm that the Australian Spinal Research Foundation, first of all, I find it very exciting. Uh, I get the conceptual model, and, and these are areas that now we can put as a focus of study. Um, yep. and, and, and when we look at that, when we look at that definition, uh, by the way, the graphic, I absolutely love the, the diminished state of being, the reduced coherence, biomechanical function, altered neurological function, altered adaptability, all key aspects of, of subluxation. Um, can you delve deeper a little bit about each of, uh, why those areas were selected or how that came about in the discussions? Like I, I, I personally think it must have been fa fascinating. Well, I mean, uh, was it was essentially we went we went with a blank slate and said, okay, well, what 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 is important? And you know, you look at previous definitions, neurological and biomechanical is always part of it, and uh, you know, coherence and adaptability were, you know, that they're they're a perfect part of chiropractic. You know, where our 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 objective really is the reduction of vertebral subluxation to help the expression of life. So if you're looking at the expression of life, that's that coherence and that adaptability. Um, and that's what we, we We went round and we asked academics, researchers, people in politics, people in clinical practice, what was what was important and took it from there to, de to develop that really. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think it, it really creates a great um, vision of different areas that you can then put in terms of study. Yeah, and that's that's exactly because it's a conceptual definition. So then someone else might have, uh, um, you know, there's different organisations that have certain definitions or or the certain aspects that they want that they want to assess. All it's all part of subluxation and chiropractic. But yeah, you can break it down, or you can do things in combination. Right, and then then have something that's testable and studyable, and then Correct. how to select what choose what you choose in terms of funding in terms of what you want to put study on which there's another factor I don't know if people realize um, I think it's it's amazing because you know other healthcare professions get funding from governmental organizations and such and, and we don't really have that in chiropractic uh, ASRF how many years have you been around and how yes. much how many how many years have you been around and how much funding have you been able to do in terms of research um, we've been funding research for about uh, I think the funding of research has been for about 30 years and there's uh, up, up to uh, 2.2, 2.3 million dollars in, in funding at uh, present that we've done um, and on and ongoing at the moment there'd be probably another quarter of a million ongoing that's you know yet yet to be funded because it's you know it's what's being paid out in future years yeah right. so um, yeah. and actually just just today I um, the, the expressions of interest. We just had a new, a new our, our 2018 round of expressions of interest for um, uh, for uh, for research projects, and I just got uh, emailed them today to um, to start the process of reviewing. So I'm I'm looking forward to. It's a bit weird, but I'm looking forward to diving in and, and reading what what that what people have on on offer. And you know the the expressions come from all over the world, from Europe. Uh, the states, Australia, New Zealand, yeah, it's, it, it really is a global, a global organization. Well, and let's, let's mention that. See, so often chiropractors, individual practitioners, um, focus on their four walls of their practice and what's happening inside it and forget uh, or don't, or not, don't um, easily folk, you know, pay attention to what's going on outside their office. 
Um, and that's yeah. part of why politically we see chiropractic where it is. And if we're going to shift that, having a view, A, outside your office of how you can expand your vision and contribute and serve is vital. But then beyond that, um, having a global vision that not like, hey, I'm a chiropractor in Australia and I don't care what's going on in Europe or what's going on in the U.S. or vice versa. Like we, especially the, the vitalistic, subluxation oriented practitioners, it's such a small camp. And um, we're, if we're divisive, um, that's problematic. We have to have a global vision of working together. Um, even if we might have differences that we like to discuss, that we've got to come together on things if we're going to uh, expand. Well, absolutely. Just, just look at chiropractic education and, and in our, our camp, the subluxation focus camp, there's, there, are, there are more colleges. Well, when you know, I, I sit on the board of the Scotland College of Chiropractic, which is due to open in, um, next year. But there's, with, when that comes on and the college in Australia and others, there, there's more vitalistic or subluxation colleges, focused colleges outside of North America. So we cannot, we cannot be isolated to our own little countries. It, ju it just doesn't work. Um, and I think it, 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 that, that sort of attitude hasn't, certainly, like you said, it, it has um, curtailed our, our um, development. Um, and we, we can't think like that anymore. We can't. We can't we can't be just funding something here because it's in our backyard. And like you said, the chiropractor that thinks of their own four, four walls until there's a crisis and they want someone outside their walls to come in and, and, and help. And then they're, and even then they don't necessarily want to fund things all the time. You know, it, 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 chiropractors are the best people at having really long pockets and really short arms. And we need, we need, to, we need to stop. We need to, I think we need to you know, grow up and mature a little bit and think, righto, this is a global profession. We are all in it together. We, we need to work together to make a massive, massive difference and we need to act now. We, shouldn't, we can't just wait, waiting for the person over here or the person over here to take a step. We all need to take a step. Yeah, absolutely. And it's funny, as I listen to you, I kind of pictured someone that was in a reactive therapeutic mode as compared to a wellness mode. It's like, I'm gonna be reactive yeah. when there's a problem in my backyard or in my office that I'm gonna ask for help you know, the outside yep. in versus, hey, I'm going to put energy, fund, contribute energetically, financially, whatever, to things that are going to advance, you know, and help chiropractic, right? Like that's, that's what we all need to do. If we, if that, that would be a wellness mindset to uh, chiropractic science and research and politics. Um, so now uh, I'm curious in that research, there's probably some things in research to get you excited. Um, are there any particular areas that you see in, in coming chiropractic research, like looking ahead that like, wow, this is going to be exciting if we get to study this, or if we get, ev or if we get evidence on this, it's, it's kind of would be really cool. Well, yeah, I, and it's, it might not seem that exciting, but <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I actually think taking a step back and we've, there's been so much stuff on, um, on um, you know the out outcomes, and that's great. Even even case studies and things like that. There's there's some great outcomes from chiropractic care, um, but, but we've been a bit remiss in really getting great detail of the vertebral subluxation um, from the from the lowest level of take a case study or a case series. Our, our objective to assess and correct or reduce the subluxation. So. Take, take the case study and case series, there's often times it shows an assessment of it, but it doesn't, there's no information to say it's been reduced, it being the subluxation. Right. We need to get back to, on top of that. And, that and, and that's the role of the person in the clinical practice, actually. So that, that's us in the field. Right. Um, but getting really good information on the reliability and um, validity of the common assessment, uh, you know, things like palpation, leg length checks, cervical syndromes, things like that that we use, technology that we use, you know. There's, there's a lot of work that we can do on that. Getting a visual understanding of the subluxation that's reliable and reproducible. And there, and there are a lot of opportunities to be funding this sort of research in the near future. And you and, said something important about that, and there was something important that I noticed in the meetings that I was at, which was there's a bent or focus of like, we want research that will help the practitioner in the field. Yeah. So talk about that because people will say, well, 
what's in it for me? How does this impact me? Right? Yeah. Well, I think, I mean, there's, there's some great research out there, but there's, there's a lot of research that that's, that's done in a lab. You know, it's, I think it's just not even comparable really. It's, it's good information, don't get me wrong, but it's really not comparable to what you do in practice. And there might be some great stories that you can, that you can tell, but you know, if, if there's stories on spinal manipulation and what spinal manipulation does for X, Y, and Z, well, is that congruent with you, with your practice? What do you do every day? I don't, I don't do spinal manipulation. I assess for vertebral subluxation and specifically deliver an adjustment to improve or reduce the subluxation. Um, I think there's there's been. Uh, I mean, some of that stuff's quite juicy though. And it, it's, it seems really appealing, and it's a bright, shiny thing. But in terms of clinical practice, what evidence, or when, what we need, is more and more evidence. There's a there's a chunk of evidence out there, but what we need is more and more evidence of what we do every day. If the objective is to assess for and reduce or bring about the correction of the tibial subluxation, let's make damn sure that the assessments we're using are the best that we can and we need to be mature enough to think okay if we do research one of these things and it, well, and it really whilst it's used commonly it the, the waters are so muddy that maybe we do need to tweak it a little bit or, or or come up with a slightly different approach or include it with something else so you know it's like making a legal case you don't just get one person's testimony you have you have all of these things to make a really solid case um does that make sense you know like oh we, yeah absolutely yeah Absolutely. Um, and, the, and then the outcomes, you know, once we, once we have a clear understanding of what we're doing, and I, we see it every day in, in clinical practice, the improvements in people's lives, we just need a little bit more meat behind it, okay, you know. And like back to what I was saying before with the case studies and case series and things like that, if someone, one of the naysayers said, but what's the evidence that you've reduced subluxation? I know they say that they, they don't exist. Well, that's just, that's just ridiculous. There's so much evidence to suggest they resist. I mean, that's just a ridiculous argument. But if they just say, what's the evidence that you've reduced it? If you look at a, a whole bunch of case studies, just recently, in fact, for my high, I went through every clinical paper um, that's a, in all the chiropractic journals in for 2017, so the most recent year. And there was there was 96 papers, which actually boiled down to about um, 86 or 84 papers, because you know even though they're in chiropractic journals, some of them it was acupuncture was used and it was physical therapy and or nutrition was given and things like that. Um, and it, there, there was a very small percentage of this clinical evidence showing a reduction in vertebral subluxation, not because it didn't happen, just because it wasn't recorded. Right. It's like we. It's like we, we know we know without question that subluxation reduces with chiropractic care, but we forget to record it. And so, so there's this massive, massive gap that could quite easily be filled. You know, yeah. I have no doubt. Yeah. And my, uh, some of the own, my own published uh, articles, they, they've got that gap. And it just, it just dawned on me that, you know, I know, I know subluxation reduced, but I, I forgot to write it down. Yeah, and, and and here's the thing: the the practitioner in the field can contribute. They can contribute information and data, and people That's don't realize that the the things that we call miracles every day in our office and yeah. all the things that we see can can be. You know, there's ways now that everything we do or a large part of what we do in our office can contribute to that body of knowledge, rather there's, than us being islands. There are so many ways that the practitioner, the person in private practice, can contribute. You know that. What, getting getting better at keeping your notes so that if they want to write a case study or want to give it to a student or someone else to write a case study or a case series, that information is there. They could participate in a in a PBR. You know, like groups in uh, in the states like the um, ICPA, they have a huge PBRF program. You know, they can could, could trip, contribute to that. Dig deep and give financially to chiropractic research. You know, if you're not going to do it yourself, fund someone else to be doing it. And it's it's I mean. Donating to chiropractic research is like, is kind of like insurance for your profession. And <laughs> yeah, your profession, seriously. You know, yeah. It does, and it just 
the chiropractic deserves it. You know, think think about how much research BJ was doing. You yeah. know, yeah. What do what do we let's think about the clinical? Have you ever seen any of the clinical notes from the B, BJ clinic? It's it's like really detailed stuff, and then all of a sudden, it's we've lost it. You know, we we right. just. We're not keeping the detail. And did he necessarily need to do that? I mean, he could have spent his time doing other things, but he was he driven. Whatever he wanted. Yeah, yeah, right. You know, he 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 had pl plenty of re you know resources to do whatever he wanted. He didn't need to do that, but he put so much time and energy because he understood the importance of it. And um, that's the thing. I always think to myself um, this. When I see that people maybe don't donate to any school, don't donate to any or member of any organization, or don't donate to research, like like you know they're like I'm not giving to any of that stuff. And there's people that they just don't do any of that or don't think about it. I always think like how much has given chiropractic given you like even just your own care that you receive care. How much how much more days of health has you and your family gone in versus ill days? How much longer is your life going to be because you're a chiropractic patient? Don't you at least know that? Because you probably get chiropractic care for free as a chiropractor, most likely, you know. Exactly. Yeah, so like at least give that back, you know, because because you, know, you get you gain so much. Can you can you imagine if with just within our own camp, just within the just within just within the mile high camp, if everybody that's a mile high attendee mm -hmm. contributed an adjustment a week, or a right. To yeah. chiropractic, yeah. chiropractic research, you know, right. and and it's in exchange for the for the um, enhancement in life that they get through chiropractic care, through the the care from another chiropractor, it it just makes it it's such a small price to pay, you know, you're getting the care anyway. Yeah, why should why should you? a great way to say it. It's like okay, well, every time you get adjusted by a chiropractor, donate somewhere, you know, instead of <laughs> right. Or something like that, and it could be, it could be, it, it, you, you could you could change it. You could you say, like, this quarter, you know, the the, the 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 summer the summer quarter, I'm giving it to this. The winter quarter, I'm giving it to this. The fall quarter, I'm giving it to this. Do whatever you want. Just just support stuff that's that's, but it's got to be consistent with with, you know, the road you're traveling. You know. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, or even like and, every time you check your kids, you don't have to pay to bring them to a chiropractor because you can check them, right? Like, what if you yeah. <laughs> what if you paid yourself for that adjustment and donated it to chiropractic? Exactly. <laughs> you know. You know. So. <laughs> um, so let me ask you this. Sure. Okay. Sure. I've, 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 some of my kids are little. I've got one. One's five years old. I'm sure she would prefer that that money went to Barbies, but oh, you know. Yeah. Right. <laughs> But I mean, if you think in a little bigger thing, you gain so much from chiropractic, just that's intangible that you don't realize to give some aspect of that back uh, to whatever Absolutely. organization you, uh, you feel in alignment with and you, you like their values of, whether it be research or maybe a particular school like New Zealand or Sherman, like do that. Um, yeah. So uh, let me ask you this, uh, going a little bit further, um, I know we talked about globalization and the chiropractor in their backyard. But let's look at Australia a second. I, I don't, you're on that side of the world, I'm not. I always hear really pretty significant things about what the chiropractic climate is like in Australia, which makes me feel like this is even more needed there. Yeah, well, it's, I mean, I, I used to practice in Australia, and um, to, a degree, to a degree, I guess I found it kind, uh, kind of medical. Um, but there's some, there's some, there's there's a, a great surge of subluxation focused chiropractic there, but at the moment they seem to just be getting a, a hammering for what's well, it's actually calmed down a little bit to be honest with the with the skeptic groups and things like that. But whilst whilst that's calmed down, there seems to be other other little agendas on you know under the surface. So it might be that there's um, you know there's there's two main associations there. There's the Chiropractors Association, which is the main one, and then there's an, uh, uh, another one called Chiropractic Australia. And Chiropractic Australia is they're they're, they're really their bent is towards a, a, a more medically oriented um, style of practice. Um, which is okay if that's what you want to do, but you shouldn't stop the uh, person practicing the way they want to down the street. That's that's uh, subluxation focused, and they would choose to have subluxation just wiped wiped out of the not not just out of the lexicon, but out of the out of anything to do with chiropractic whatsoever. 
um, which is a shame. You know, it's, it's kind of like wiping out open plan practice or something like that just because one person doesn't like it. That's not okay. Yeah. You, know, you, sh you should choice in how you practice. Okay. Yeah. Now, hey, if someone chooses to check subluxation because the person has, or, or I, I guarantee the person that only addresses low back pain and things like that, the thing that they're finding, we would call the same thing a subluxation. They're just limiting it to where, you know, in addition, they have to be hurt there. You know, so they're, they're, lim they're limiting the, um, the expression of life of the person on the table, in, in my opinion. But they're still checking for a subluxation. They might choose to call it something different. They're just limiting it to where the, where the pain is. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I don't see the point in, in throwing out things like subluxation when they're actually doing the same thing just for a different reason. Right, right. Yeah. And, and yeah, we definitely need to grow in the evidence in that. And, and significantly, it's not like we have to grow it a little. We, we need to grow it a lot. So if there's something people yeah, put energy towards, research is a biggie. Yeah, absolutely. And it is, like I said before, it is insurance for, you know, in, in the climate of today, the research and evidence is 100 percent. That is the, you know, that's the, the currency. So it is insurance for the future of the profession. And if, if you want the future of the profession to be strong, subluxation focused, we need to invest in evidence we need to we need to invest in investigation and then have the evidence and be mature enough to set what the evidence shows yeah absolutely absolutely and it's going to be well, <laughs> and I'm, and awesome I'm, I'm also i'll tell you this i'm really thrilled that yourself um that you're coming out to mile high from australia um from new zealand um that yeah. billy chow is coming out um yeah. uh i was really enjoyed getting to see uh, both of you um, at the Berkshires. I've always enjoyed your presentations that I've seen at, at the Berkshires because I think that's where the couple times I've heard you speak. Um, and so I'm really thrilled for, for you guys to come out and for everyone in the uh, Mile High area to get, get to get to know all of you. Yeah, oh, I can't wait to get there. I'm so thrilled to get invited. Actually, it's gonna be it's gonna be a blast. Yeah. Well, everything. A puff on the stage because the the altitude's so high, but it'll be it'll be fine. Well, yeah. Well, you better get training. You got to start training now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> take some going out for a month. take it's, some spritz in New just Zealand about up the mountains. You know, get get some altitude in New Zealand up the mountains so you get yeah, ready. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, these down down our way, it's all sort of it's it's all mountain sheep orcs and all that sort of stuff so it's it's just great <laughs> well, I just realize you know anybody can speak at sea level but not everybody can speak a mile high so you know <laughs> and i'm six foot three so it's like it's it's a little the, the altitude's going to be terrible yeah, it's gonna be even thinner yeah it's going to be even thinner yeah. right <laughs> if, you, oh, if, if you see if you see me kneeling on the ground you'll know i just i just need oxygen yeah. so if we were to so if we were to hone in on like why it's super important to support organizations like the ASRF, why why is that super important? Well, there's now. there's only right now there's well I've heard over the last twenty years that I've been in chiropractic practice. Now I go to conferences and whatnot, and everyone said we're at the it's the best time to be a chiropractor. We're at the crossroads. But we've been at the crossroads for more than 20 years. So right now, without doubt, is the best time and the, the vital time to be funding research because we need to investigate what it is we do. We've identified gaps. We need to work with them. Right? It's something that's important for, uh, for not, not just the subluxation-focused chiropractor, but every chiropractor. Right. It's important to have evidence that supports what we do. Yep. Um, it's, it's just the currency that we deal in these days. You know, if you're talking to a government agency, it's the currency that we deal in. Um, you know, the, the, our identity is requires it. You know, the, at the at the moment, you'll, you, like you talked about in Australia, there's to a degree a cleansing. You know, or a lexicon cleansing, trying to get subluxation taken out of this. This has happened in the States, it's happened in different parts, it happened in the, in the UK a couple of years ago. It's, if we don't have the evidence to support it, and the evidence is there, we just need more of it. You know, mm -hmm. if, if, if the, 
the 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 greater the amount you have, the far clearer and the louder the noise is coming from it. Okay, right. and it is really really important to our identity. When you've got colleges, you know you've got colleges around the world in your own neck of the woods that put out identity papers that you know that state that their mission is to set, address spinal dysfunction because that's what you know to treat pain syndromes because that's what other professions do and because it's the most widely done thing it makes them unique this is what a college came out with how that makes them unique is beyond like trying to mimic everybody else does not make you unique yeah chiropractic offers such a unique service we need the evidence to support that you know yeah and the evidence is there we just need more and, and, and it is vital. And I love that in setting a research paradigm um, or agenda, uh, that wrapping around the whole subluxation rather than pain syndrome is diminished state of being. That any the diminished yep. state of being, your state of being is impacted by subluxation, by disconnection, by interference. I, I love that that's the overwrapping uh, aspect of it. Yeah. And what, but what I think is super important is the staged process that, that the ASRF is, is um, uh, moving through to do that. So getting our focus right now, for instance, is on reliability and validity mm -hmm. of particular subluxation assessment and yep. correction. But to make sure we're super clear on that, so then when we're moving through into quality of life studies and, and, and whatnot, and that, that adaption, the coherence, we know that these assessments and this is what we did crystal clear this was the outcome based on this without doubt you know and that's it's i think it's an important distinction rather than just as things have been in the past oh that sounds like a great idea that sounds like a great idea you know if there's little if there's little gaps it, it doesn't mean the research is, that was done over here was poor but there might be a little gap in the lead up to it, okay? Which which takes a bit of the 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 sting out of the uh, the 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 effectiveness of that of that work. You know, doesn't make it bad work, right? Just chills it a bit. Yep, yep. So um, yeah, again, I, I want to thank you for some being someone who contributes so much to chiropractic and puts time and energy. And, and you know, if you look around at a lot of people that do that, no one has to. Right? No one's making any of us do it. We, we do it because we care. And there's a lot of people that care that don't necessarily know they could get involved more, either energy, time, or finances. And doing something like just becoming a member of the ASRF, which I, I encourage anybody who's listening to this, become a member of ASRF. When you come to Mile High, become a member of ASRF. I want to see everybody at Mile High to enroll to be a member um, and, and just put a little bit each month uh, of what chiropractic has given you back to it to chiropractic research and i want people to do that with the foundation also and i want people to do that with other organizations but this year yeah, so what, we we want to highlight the asrf because their efforts are are a big part of our future yeah i, I couldn't i couldn't agree more i mean i might be a bit biased but i just i just couldn't agree more and it is such a fraction of just to be a member is literally the cost of a cup of coffee or two a week you know I would suggest people give more, but if everyone was a member and continued to be a member annually, it would make such a massive difference to chiropractic on a global scale. See, I did that. I decided that I'm just brewing my coffee at home. I'm not going out anymore. I just, I, I, I got to, <laughs> and by brewing my coffee at home, I can give more to chiropractic. You know, and I can actually have more coffee too that way. So, yeah. <laughs> so I, I got a nice, my own nice uh, uh, cappuccino maker station that's all automated. It, it, it costs a chunk of change, but uh, but now I save on that investment, and I can you know spend five instead of five dollars a day at Starbucks, I, I give to research. So you exactly, know, everybody wins, and I can have more coffee than than anybody. So. <laughs> It's ca caffeinated quality of life. It's just as important as chiropractic. It's great. Well, well you know, I got to raise my state of being. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't want it to be diminished. So, exactly. um, so, so between chiropractic and caffeine, I'm covered. Um, <laughs>
Perfect. You'll, you'd, you'd love New Zealand. The cafe culture here is amazing and the coffee is exquisite. Well, yeah. I'll tell you, I am very excited to go to New Zealand and to Australia this summer. Uh, I'm gonna, people, some people know this, some don't, but maybe some people in Australia and New Zealand get to listen to this podcast. Um, I, I'm excited to be going to teach a network level one program there. And, you know, the research done with network, coherence of all the things I've seen. I was really excited about the quality of life work that network did years ago. I thought that was phenomenal, yeah. but it was 20 years, it was in the 90s, it was 20 years ago. The new studies on coherence, that's the, the most exciting thing that I've seen in chiropractic in, in a long time. Um, yeah. it, it's, it's thrilling to see that there's evidence of coherence developed in a nervous system. And actually, I don't know if you are aware of this, that the, they're actually, the, the team that researched that, they're applying for a pattern, or they have applied for a pattern, um, in nerve pulse variability, that the, 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 that's what they're calling it, the pattern. That yeah. the, the protocol they use for coherence, they want to use that as a, as a protocol or pattern it as a protocol for, dis, for um, studying the function of the nervous system in nerve pulse variability, which is oh, yeah. very exciting. I think that's th every chiropractor on the planet, every chiropractic school should be like, wow, that's, that's thrilling, and let's fund that, yeah. you know? Well, that, that's that's the thing. There's no, there's no, you know, when when you look at some of these studies on on um, human function, quality of life, athletic performance, and th there's there's not a single chiropractor, regardless of where you are on the spectrum, there's not a single chiropractor that cannot benefit from that, from having that knowledge and having that conversation with their patients. Who wouldn't want that? You know, I mean, studies where they where they survey patients and why patients choose chiropractic care, it is oftentimes and routinely well beyond the therapeutic benefit. They they want more, you know. And if the public's asking for it, why fight it? Yeah, absolutely. Just insane to me. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I, I want to thank you for taking your time. Uh, I know your schedule is quite full to to be on the Mile High podcast. We're so thrilled and taking your time to come out to, to Colorado and to be at Mile High August 16th to 19th. Everybody who's cool is going to be there. So, you know, if you have not registered um, and you want to be with the cool people, then you got to register uh, August 16th to 19th, www.milehighchiro.org. And uh, we look forward to seeing you. Thank you again for all you do for chiropractic. Thank you so much for having me. Like our page on Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash Mile High Cairo.